Hello, everybody. Well, it's time. It's finally happening. I know I talked about it forever ago, but here it is. The Abnormality Tier List. I said that this might be something that I was going to do at the end of Lobotomy at the very, very end. I had said I was maybe going to be doing it in Season 1, I think, at the end. And then I think I, I mentioned it again at the end of Season 2. But this has been something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Just because, one, I think it's a good... You know, a good way to just kind of recount my feelings towards everything in a very straightforward way. Uh, and at the same time, also, I don't know, I just think it's fun. I like tier lists. I like making them. I think they're kind of neat. It's, it's mainly just because I like to see other people's opinions on the same things that I have opinions on. Uh, and what better way to do it than by giving my straight opinion towards 95% of these abnormalities and seeing how you guys agree and disagree. Well, we have five categories. We've got red to green. Uh, starting with red, unstoppable. I'm pretty much going to be putting anything into this category that is almost a guaranteed reset and, and maybe even game reset too. If if this escapes, if you get it, it's going to put you in a tough spot that you really can't remedy unless you have a means of like doing so, i.e. if you have the White Knight gear, the Apocalypse Bird set. Um, so it's, it's mostly for like there is really no recovery from this one. Moving down one, we have really hard, which is just going to be like, if it if it gets out, it's very hard to suppress. If it's in your facility, if you have to work with it, it's very hard. It's annoying. Um, and it's not just annoying, but it's like, it's like painfully annoying. <laughs> um, just to give an idea of the difference between the two, Unstoppable, obviously White Knight, really hard more like blue star uh if it escapes it's not it's not an instant like day reset there are ways to fix it it's almost almost uh you know certainly going to mean that you lose an employee or two but it's not the end of the world difficult but manageable um difficult but manageable is more so like uh they you you have them but you don't really have to be too worried about them it's just I mean, it's going to be where 95% of these abnormalities are going to go, just because a lot of them aren't really hard. It's just they're, they're kind of existent for you. It actually needs to be another category, but I don't actually think I can add another category, can I? Maybe? Maybe. Maybe we'll change, maybe we'll change a category. It would be nice if I could just, I can add a row. Good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Very helpful, thank you. <laughs> I forgot, I needed this as a category, and we're gonna make you blue. Okay, cool, there we go. So, yeah, uh, difficult but manageable, they're they're annoying, what can I say? It's it's kind of a pain to have them around, but it's not nearly as bad as some of the other ones that you could have. Just annoying, they're just annoying. Um, they're not hard, if they get out, they're not easy, or they're not hard to suppress, it's pretty easy to put them back. Uh, you don't have to do much in terms of, you know, working requirements, they're just kind of a pain. Take the day off, there won't be any problems. This is for abnormalities that really are just there. Um, you know, you and them are existing in the same facility, but that's about it. You don't have to pay any attention to them. You don't have to give them special treatment. You don't have to worry about them breaching. They just kind of exist. And if you were to leave and not come back, there probably would not be a single issue. And then we have very helpful, thank you. And that is reserved for the ones that I actually like a lot. And also think can be a, a good thing for you as opposed to, you know, the rest of these painful, annoying ones that kind of suck. With that, we're going to jump right in. So they are alphabetized, and I do have a cheat sheet as well, because I will be honest with you, I don't actually remember the names and also what they all do. Uh, I remember like 95% of them, but some of them we saw in season two as we were coming down to an end, and I didn't pay more attention to them than I had to. You know, it is what it is. Um... So starting up first, we have 1.76 megahertz. It's just annoying. Um, the whole the whole gimmick behind this one is it releases like the static across your corridors and your hallways and the elevators and whatnot. It's just kind of a pain. Um, the sanity damage can suck. If you have people in, in ego, it literally is almost negligible. You don't really have to worry about it. But if you're starting off and this is like one of the first ones you get, it kind of could be bad. But it's not the end of the world. Uh, well, to put it simply, it's just annoying. 
Uh, next we have... Ugh. Ugh. One of my least favorite abnormalities of the entire game. And it's not even that bad. Like, it's not even ranked that high. It's it's a, it's a only evolved, but it's one of my absolute least favorite. Uh, well, it's All Ruin, and you're going to go in the really hard category. All Ruin is a very interesting one. Um, I'm actually going to pull up the little page for it because I, I know a lot of what it does, but I feel like there's more that I'm also going to forget about while talking about it. Let's see here. Uh, I know that it escapes if you work with it. Let's see. What does its counter start off at? Yeah, it's a one. So that's what I thought. It's like Silent Orchestra, but worse. <laughs> um, it starts at a one counter, and any time that you get a good or a bad, it will pretty much guaranteed escape. Uh, it teleports all over the place. It's, I mean, it's kind of just a pain in the ass. They do, a t it does a ton of white damage. Uh, if they go insane while they're in the room, they instantly die instead of losing their minds, which adds to the fact that it's kind of an annoyance. Uh, the, the biggest thing that got this one for me is the fact how often it teleports and how fast it teleports. If you don't have employees in every single section of your facility, you almost can't you almost can't ensure that you will be able to suppress it. Uh, you can't really move to it fast enough before it ends up teleporting, even with like even with like the the speed champions like Brian and Hen and Henry, they couldn't get to it in time before it was gone, before it was doing its own thing somewhere else. It's really annoying, and I would say it's pretty hard too, just be just suppress suppression wise. Uh, that is that is one of the main reasons that it goes in the really hard, and that's just kind of my opinion on it. I think it's kind of a shitty abnormality, and I don't ever want it in my facility ever. But it's not unstoppable. I mean, it can be stopped. It's not the end of the world. Just annoying. <laughs> All right, next up we have Apocalypse Bird. Right, this one's gonna be a little bit. This one's gonna be a little bit of a hot take here. I think it's also just really hard and not unstoppable. And here's kind of my thought process on this. We only took like two tries to take out Apocalypse Bird. And most of the reason that we had to try it again was because White Knight escaped on top of that. It's annoying. It's really annoying. And it's really hard too. There's a, there's three eggs. You have to go beat the eggs up and then it'll stop doing things. It can summon your employees and kill them. I mean, it's just look all around. It's just a, an annoying, bad abnormality. But it isn't that hard for one of the mini like the big mini bosses it's not that bad um i would say that it's it's just really hard it's not unstoppable it only took us like two three tries maybe and the biggest thing that we had to worry about was just the possession and kill um and staying away from it wasn't hard if it if it popped up into the room that you were fighting an egg in you could just literally run away and it wasn't the end of the world um yeah, I think really hard is a pretty apt description. The gear that it gives you is fantastic. Um, overall, it's a pretty solid abnormality, uh, and I like it a lot, and it's very hard to deal with. <laughs> Alright, Army in Black. I'm, I'm a little bit torn on where to place this one, because there's two in mind that I want. I almost want to put it in the very helpful thank you. And at the same time, I want to put it in the difficult manageable. I think, honestly, if I was going to put it anywhere, I would put it here in the very helpful thank you. Army in Black has a neat mechanic, uh, as I'm sure all of you know, where you can ask it to offer you healing. And it lowers the counter, but you get, I mean, you you basically get some insured healing from it. It is a Zayn that is an Aleph in disguise. And I would say it's pretty good. I would say it's pretty good. It escapes um, when it, when the counter hits zero, and it does these little mushroom clouds when it reaches the main facility, uh, or no, not the main facility, but like the main department room, and it'll do a thing, and I think it lowers the counters of everything in that department by one, I'm pretty sure. It's it's annoying, it's annoying. And that's why I was gonna put it in the, in the difficult but manageable or annoying category. It's not hard to suppress, you just have to have people ready. So it's not the end of the world, but I think honestly that the protection value it offers is better than the annoyance that it causes when it gets out. And that's just my opinion. I think it's more of a benefit for a facility than it is an annoyance. 
Um, we got some pretty solid ego gear, uh, e ego gear from it. Paired with a helmet, they were kind of unstoppable. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. It's one that I would definitely want if I have to have an Aleph. I would definitely take this one. And I think, like I said, it's just more of a help than it is, a, like, a negative. And, you know, I mean, that that's probably going to be said for most of them. Like, most of the, uh, the abnormalities that have some sort of a benefiting capacity. And, uh, you know what? It just happens that we're starting with Armian Black. Backward Clock. I'm gonna pull this one up. Just because I want to make sure. It is Backward Clock. I couldn't remember if it's Backwards Clock or Backward. It is Backward. Uh, very helpful, thank you. Backward Clock is very good. Um... It's not hard to gimmick your way out of either, because if you just make an employee whose sole purpose is to be sacrificed to the clock, you can pretty much get out of any scenario that you put yourself into. Um, it It's above. It only takes four charges and that you send somebody in and the clock disappears as well as the employee and everything that's breaching goes back into its containment. Um, I am a fan a lot. We never really got a chance to use it, use it, which is unfortunate, but I can definitely see this being a really beneficial help to a lot of people. Um, it, it requires the sacrifice of a level 5 employee for it to work, which I guess could be a downside to it. But the fact, it, the fact of the matter is, you really don't have to worry at the point in time in which you would get it. Like, a level, you would have lost level 5s anyways, you know? If you, if you make a sole employee whose, whose designation is to use the backwards clock, it's not really that big of a loss. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Very helpful. Thank you. All right. Next, we have uh, Beauty and the Beast. I'm pretty sure it's Beauty and the Beast. Let me, let me, well, let me check the name real quick because I don't want to give you all... F yeah, Beauty and the Beast. I don't want to give you guys false information on this. You, you lost your minds. Take the day off. There won't be any problem. You just have to not do repression work two times in a row. I'm sure everybody loses one employee to it when they do repression twice before they buy the managerial tips. It's not that bad. Um, it's not that bad. You you literally could forget about it and not have a single issue in your department. I think we had it um, and used it up until the point that we got people to like, well, got people with higher level abnormalities to train stats with, and then we just didn't touch it ever again unless we had to. The only, the only time that you would eat, like ever have to worry about it is if there was a uh, if there was a cliff off meltdown. But even then, it doesn't escape. So the cliff off could melt down, and it's not the end of the world. It's just, you know, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Uh, pretty simple, pretty simple. It's kind of cool. I liked the, uh, I liked the, when your employee does repression twice, they turn into the beast. I thought that was a kind of cool thing. Overall, pretty neat abnormality. I'm a fan. Behavior adjustment. Uh, if there was a top of the top for very helpful thank you, that's where you would go. One of my favorite tools in the entire game, and that's mostly because it's one of the tools that actually benefits <laughs> with no downside whatsoever. Um, it basically just raises the, the justice stats, your attack speed and I think movement speed as well. And that's all it does. There's no downside to it. There's, there's not really anything that you have to worry about. It's, it's just a good abnormality. It's one of the few tools that you can reliably put on anybody and never have to worry about it. Uh, if there was a top of the top, which I'm just going to signify by placing it over here at the other side, yeah, you are first and foremost for this category. And, I mean, it's good. Every time that we had a, a big breach that we had to do White Knight Apocalypse Bird, I'd always throw it on somebody. Um... Usually on whoever had the censored gear, just so that they could get even more health back and just survive for longer. It, move, it makes people faster. It makes people attack, you know, faster. It's just a good abnormality. Big and will be bad wolf. I'm pretty sure. I think it's... Yes. Big and will be bad wolf. I think that this one is also one of the ones that's kind of a wash. <laughs> Unless you have red in the department as well. And the thing is, I don't really think, even if the two of them are in the same department, it's the end of the world. It's difficult, but manageable. Um, on its own, the biggest annoyance is the fact that it'll eat your employees. 
but you can get them back. Like it's not an instant. It's not an instant kill. It's not an instant kill. It's just annoying. Um, when it escapes with red, it becomes extremely fast and hard to suppress. And I think that that is pretty difficult. But again, it's that's a very specific scenario that has to occur. And nine out of ten times, you're not going to be in that situation whatsoever. Um, that's just my opinion. I think that I think that it's definitely annoying and difficult, but it's manageable. It's it's not the end of the world if it escapes. Unlike the next one here. Oh you, oh you, big bird. Big Bird, you are really hard. <laughs> you are really hard. I think that Big Bird is probably one of my absolute least favorite abnormalities along with Alruin, which a lot of them are going to get special, like, <laughs> difficulty points just because I don't like them. He killed so many of my employees. He escapes. He does a possession over time, which is annoying. A possession over time is obnoxious. And if it fills up and he gets to you, he instantly kills you. We lost, like, three of our god-tier employees to this guy. Uh, and there's not much you can do unless you, like, you can't damage and get away from it at the same time. It's just kind of obnoxious. I didn't really like him at all. I think that it's pretty much fine to never have in your facility ever unless you want to have Apocalypse Bird 2. Um... Like, if you're using the Apocalypse Bird set, you you can have them all in the facility and Apocalypse Bird won't ever form. Uh, I mean, that's just... it's. It, I would be fine to never have him again. Truly, honestly, I would be fine to never have him ever again. It's The, the gear isn't that good either. It's decent. It's a bump up from a lot of things that you could have. It's Vav. It's just not that good. Um... Overall, it's a really hard abnormality that I don't like. I think really hard is a pretty good spot for him. Granted, on its own, suppressing it is not bad. You just have to make sure that you don't get possessed, but... Eh... Annoying. It's annoying. <sighs> judgment. Bird of judgment. Judgment bird. Whichever you would like to call it. You... I would also... Here's the thing. I would also be tempted to put him into the really hard category, but I think more realistically, it's difficult but manageable. I would almost be tempted to put him into really hard because it is really hard if it's the first, if it's the first of the birds that you get, it's really hard. And also, if you don't have a means of negating pale damage, it's really hard. And that's where I said there's a lot of factors that come into this. If I'm thinking about it in terms of am I at a stacked end game facility i have every item in the game i don't need to worry it's just difficult it's difficult manageable get somebody with the pale gear and you can send them into work a million times and not really have to worry unless you are a you know starting facility you have almost no gear you haven't gotten anything that does really you know good pale prevention and it's really hard um I think I'm going to keep him in the difficult but manageable because I don't truly think he is on the same tier as Apocalypse Bird or Big Bird or Alruin. He's just difficult but manageable. I don't think it's fair to the others to say that he's up there as well. His main thing comes from just making sure he doesn't, like, wipe you when you try and work with him. Which, uh, here's a simple fix to that. Don't work with him. <laughs> Bloodbath. It's pretty much one that's... Uh, completely negligible in any facility whatsoever. Uh, I think it can instant... I'm going to double check. I think it can instant kill if you go in with certain stats? Question mark? Let's see. Yeah, if they perform with level 1 fortitude or temperance, they panic. When they finish, they come out and grab and kill them. It's annoying. Um, it's annoying, but again, that's one of those ones where you just don't work with it. Like, I literally worked with it once... I think probably in the end game, just because there's not really a need to. And if you have this, the uh, the suppression from, I'm pretty sure it's Hod that gives you the starting base of three stats. It literally is just completely and utterly, you know, <laughs> null and void because you don't have to worry about the insta kill anymore. Uh, you could get it and work with it with literally a fresh made employee and not have to worry about them dying. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. 
And for that reason, it's definitely going to go and just take the day off. <laughs> uh, blue star. Oh, blue star. I... I know a minute ago I said really hard. And I kind of think really hard is still a good one. Unstoppable is pretty... Yeah, Unstoppable is pretty bad, though. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's... I'm gonna stick him in the really hard for now. He might move up, though. Oh, Blue Star. What, what, what words could describe Blue Star's annoying powers? It escapes. It picks a facility, or it picks a department. It sets up shop in the department. And it sucks every single employee that you have into it once they panic. It's pretty bad because most of your employees cannot survive for more than 15 seconds. Uh, unless they have some form of healing, be that in the form of a weapon, the censored weapon lets you restore 40% of damage that you take, you know. Uh, if you have, you know, the silent orchestra set with the monocle, it's, it's pretty hard to make it out without any casualties, unless your entire department is level 5. Everybody has, you know, god ego sets, and that's not very likely. Realistically, you're you're bound to lose a lot of employees unless you just restart the whole thing. And that's kind of part of the reason I want to put an unstoppable. Um, and you know what? The more that I think about it, I think it, it it does actually belong in the unstoppable category. I think it's kind of unfair to say that it doesn't. I couldn't tell you how many times I've had to restart because Blue Star got out. Even in endgame facilities, all of your pawns. All of your little starting employees that have just, you know, just been birthed into the world of Lobotomy Corp will die. <laughs> they, they will just quite simply get eviscerated by this thing. It's pretty unstoppable. It's pretty unstoppable. You have to have people pretty much at the ready in the facility that it will pop into to instantly take him out before he can kill anybody. Not to mention all the clerks that die. The clerks, they all die within like three of his waves. Now, he does have one very cool use, which is actually helping to take out the Red Mist. And I thank you for your services there. That was very helpful. But at the same time, it's... I mean, overall, it's just a horrible abnormality, and I hate him. I hate him. The good news is, he has a counter of three. So you have a lot of... You have a lot of leeway. Um, I'm pretty sure if you send somebody in with... Hang on. I'm going to double check this. I'm pretty sure if you send somebody in... With a low stat, they get instantly killed? Let's see, hang on a minute. Yes. Em uh, employees below Temperance 4 are instantly killed when they try and work with it. That's annoying, and it lowers the counter. Eh, it's, it's alright though. It's alright though. It's pretty unstoppable. I'm gonna keep them up there. You know what? The whole point of a tier list is so that you get my opinions. I know that my opinions are not gonna be the same as yours. <laughs> Uh, here's your, here's your, here's my chance to promote commenting a little bit. If you have a differing opinion, please tell me. That's, that's, that was my favorite part of the Little Nightmares tier list, um, was just being able to talk to people about their opinions and my opinions of the things, you know? Please tell me, if you don't think, if you, if you know, if you're like Dual Blades, you are a crazy person. Unstoppable is not fitting for Blue Star, it needs to be take a day off. Well, tell me and explain why, I would love to know. Truly, I would love to know. That's not me being sarcastic. I would actually love to know your opinion. And I would love to have a discussion about it, too. So, but yeah, we're going to move on to Censored. Difficult, but manageable. Here's the thing about Censored. You go into the room, and you take, like, three-fourths of your health and sanity. It's pretty annoying. It's pretty annoying. Um... But the thing is, if you have good, like, black resistant gear, like the, uh, the Mountain of Smiling Bodies, you're pretty much fine. The initial hit will hurt, but you'll be okay. Um, and it's pretty easy to farm out for its, its ego gift as well. If it gets out, it's not the end of the world. It's also one of the ones that's pretty easy to take down. Uh, it spawns the little robot thingies. Look, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad kind of an annoying one, but it is what it is. 
Okay, I'm pretty sure that this was Crumbling Armor. I, th I know what it does, but I think that the name is Crumbling Armor. It is. Ugh. I, I would love to put you into Very Helpful. But I think it's... I think it's more likely to put you into Just a Norm. It gives you an Ego Gift that raises all of your Justice stats up to three times. And it's pretty huge, because you can get a ton of movement speed. It lowers your health, though, which sucks. <sighs> it's... it's annoying. It's annoying. Because it's really good to have the movement speed to get around. But I don't ever like to sacrifice health for anything. Um, and not only that, but if you have the blessing from him, you can't do temperance, I don't think. You can't do any attachment work. I'm pretty sure you just die. I'm going to double check that it's attachment. I'm like 95% sure it is. Uh, yep. Uh, Nate, double check. Wait. Hang on. Wait a minute. Yes. If you use an attachment in any facility or any uh, abnormality, it will kill you, decapitate you. It's pretty annoying. It's pretty annoying. I'm not a huge fan. I don't like it that much. Um, the weapon is cool. I like the, the pale damage sword. I think it's pretty sick. Eh, it's about all that, that's all that, about all that can be said about that, though. Okay. Well, now it's time to see one of my favorite abnormalities in the entire history of the game. Therefore, he shoots. A very helpful. Thank you. The EO set in and of itself is enough to put him in here. It's just so good. You put it on one person, and they are pretty much unstoppable. The only downside is you have to send that person to suppress on their own, otherwise they will kill everybody else in the room with them. But I think that it's a I think it's a fine trade-off in my opinion at least, because here's the thing, right? I can definitely live with a solo suppression for a lot of like the, you know, the sweepers, the fixers. You send one person in there, as long as they have the health, they'll be fine. And it can hit multiple targets at once. It's pretty good. The EO gear on its own is pretty good. Not to mention the fact that you can request a bullet from him that can also do pretty significant damage. Um, the seventh one that you request does its own thing, but if you have to request seven bullets to begin with, there's something wrong. Um, you're pretty much not fitted for the situations you're in anyways. I didn't use him at all during like the big fights. I'm sure that you could have, I just didn't. He's pretty good for clearing out the, uh, the ordeals though. I think he's very helpful, and I definitely am fine to keep him there. I'm pretty sure the name is Dimension Refraction Variant, something along those lines. Just annoying. It's just annoying. It's a Vav. Um, if it escapes, it doesn't tell you where it is. You have to find it on your own. Pretty easy to find it, though, because you just have to find the trail of floating clerks, and it'll lead you pretty much straight to it. That's a pretty good amount of black damage as it pla uh, passes through. I'm pretty sure it was black, at least. It's just annoying. It's just annoying. It's not hard to keep it in. It's not hard to suppress back in when it gets out. It doesn't have that much health. Its only means of damaging is if it travels straight through, and it just travels in a line. It doesn't turn around either. If you just follow behind it, you'll be fine. Okay. Don't press me. <laughs> Don't press me is a... Is a day ender a run ender too if you're not careful i cannot express how much i hate this abnormality there are so many clips from my from my series of me pressing it and having to restart the entire thing i'm pretty sure i did it during bina's suppression too like as we were finishing it was either bina or hakma it was one of the two i had to restart the entire thing afterwards oh my god it's so obnoxious it's so obnoxious. It, it'll instantly panic or straight up murder all of your employees if you press it. It can shapeshift and take the form of other ones. It's, I hate it. I hate it. Especially if you have that and the Plague Doctor. Because then as it moves around, you lose track of where it is and it will still kill you. And it can also crash your game too. So pretty neat. Pretty fun. It's pretty unstoppable. Um, I never want it in my facilities. I will never click it in my facilities. Yeah, I mean, what more can be said about that? It's it's obnoxious. I don't like it. It's pretty unstoppable. Okay, I think this is... Uh, I know it's Black Swan. I think it's your dream of a Black Swan. Yeah. It's 
definitely one of these two. It's definitely one of these two. I'm leaning more towards the difficult but manageable, but part of me says really hard. I think difficult but manageable is fair enough. It's pretty bad just because of its damage reflection. Um, yeah, when it escapes, it's annoying, but it's also one of those ones that you really don't have to work with that much. And even if you do work with it, it's not the end of the world <laughs> because it has a pretty high cliff off, uh, cliff off counter, I'm pretty sure. What is it, like five or something like that? Yeah, it starts with a cliff off of five, so you have five to five times you have to lower that before it gets out, and then it's a pain to suppress. Other than that, though, if you can keep it in, it's not the end of the world. I didn't have too much issue with it. It got out once or twice. I pretty much just let it do its thing because it doesn't really it doesn't really kill your people that like that much. Mostly if they attack it, it will. But eh, eh, it is what it is. I will be honest with you. I don't remember what the train's name is. I don't remember what the train's name is. Uh, I'm checking real quick. Express train to hell, yes. It's pretty annoying. It's pretty annoying. You literally just have to go in and work with it before the, the lights light up, um, and then you're fine. If they do fill up, it sends a train across your facility. It does heavy black damage. Kind of obnoxious. Uh, I can kill people if you're not careful, if they don't have good gear. It's about all that can be said for that, though. Um... Eh, other than that, it's not really the end of the world. It's just an annoyance. Just an annoyance. Very festival. It's also pretty annoying. Um, mostly just because of the fact of... I lost a lot of employees because I forgot that they had the fairies on them and I would send them to work with somebody else and then they'd get in and die. That's pretty annoying. It's pretty obnoxious. Um, I'd be happy if, like... That was not a thing. <laughs> and I don't really think that the Fairy's Blessing is all that good either. I never used it in any situation whatsoever other than working with it for energy. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty much I don't really care about you. It's just annoying. Firebird. Ugh. Annoying when it gets out. Annoying to work with. I think it's difficult with manageable. Uh, even the rabbit team wasn't able to suppress this guy on their own, so that says something about how annoying it is to suppress, and that's mostly just because it goes back. It, it chooses when it's done suppressing, and if you don't get it in time, you don't get the feather. Which is pretty much the whole reason anybody would ever want to suppress it, so... It's, a, it's difficult, it's manageable, it doesn't take too much. You just have to make sure that you're, you know, not working it too much, and if you do work it too much, you're not in the room when it escapes it doesn't travel that far. I think it traveled like four rooms and then went back. Eh, it's all right. Okay, Flesh Idol. Unstoppable. Uh, it has the capacity, if you put somebody in it, after 90 seconds to kill them and also release every abnormality in your facility, which is an instant day reset. It could also be an instant, uh, an instant like suppression reset, or not suppression, but, uh, well, yeah, core suppression reset. Because that also happened to me many times. I would send somebody in there during a meltdown, forget about them, and all hell would break loose and I'd have to start over. It's obnoxious. It's obnoxious to say the least. And it's definitely one of those ones where, unless you're giving it full attention anytime somebody's in there, it will, it will absolutely ruin your day. Which you might be saying, well, why would you put somebody in there anyways? You could just put it down to take the day off. It doesn't do anything unless you work with it. This is true. But at the same time, if there's literally any meltdown that you have, unless you keep it, and it has to be like more than fit, like it's like more than 30 seconds and less than 90, I think. I'm double checking on the numbers. Hang on. Flesh idol. Flesh idol. You have to be more than 20 seconds and less than 90. So pretty much you put it in, you send other people to work. If you forget to, pay, to take them back out after 20 seconds, then, you know, everything breaks loose. If you take them out before 20 seconds, they die. It's just annoying. It's just annoying. Any any cliff off meltdown that affects it, you have to be really careful. This next kind of uh, couple of ones are pretty much all going to be in the same general area. Forsaken Murderer, uh, look, you can take the day off, there aren't any problems. I don't think I ever lost an employee to a suppression with him, even at the beginning. He doesn't do that much damage. 
he's kind of just annoying. But even then, he's not really that annoying. And he's a pretty good trainer, I must say. So he's just taking the day off there anymore. I mean, it's, it's not that bad. Same thing for uh, Fragment of Fragment of the Universe, I think. Yeah. It's annoying. It's like, if it escapes, it's kind of like, oh, great. You've escaped. It's not hard to suppress at all. Um, yeah, take the day off. There won't be any problems with it. Now, you are annoying. You're not quite on the same level as these guys. You are pretty annoying. Um, just because you're a really good justice trainer, but at the same time, that justice training is what lets you out. And when you do get out, you do pretty significant black damage. It's black and white, I think. Or it's white and red, but it's just... Look, he does both. <laughs> he does both. He's annoying. He's not too hard to suppress. Uh, at the beginning, he is. If you don't have much stuff, he can just wipe your whole your whole team. I suffered my first death to him. Thanks. That was first ever death in the entirety of this game was to uh, Funeral of the Butterflies. It was pretty annoying. Okay, this is the Sleeping Tree Sap. They're not <laughs> Sleeping Tree Sap. Giant Tree Sap. Look, I played a lot of Skyrim. I play a lot of Skyrim. All right, you're going to have to... Yeah, look, let's just gloss over that one. Let's not, eh, not even mention it. Giant Tree Sap. It has a chance of instantly killing any employee that you send in to use it. I think it just gives them health. Like, I think it just gives them healing. Let's see. They recover all missing HP and keep healing at 9 to 11 every second for 60 seconds. But they have a chance to explode. No. It is, uh, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, it was such an annoyance to grind out, I had to make a bunch of throwaway employees to do it because everybody would just keep dying. Uh, I I really am not a fan. I really am not a fan. I think that it's also one of the ones that you don't have to work with. It's annoying. It's annoying. It's a tool, so it's not as high because you don't have to work the tools pretty much ever. Even if they get a clip off and meltdown on them, they don't escape. Nothing happens if they melt down except for you lose some energy. Eh, it's not the end of the world. It's just pretty annoying. I mean, the, what, can, what can be said more than that? It's pretty annoying. I think this is the Grave of... Yeah, Grave of Cherry Blossoms. I'll be honest, this is one of the ones I don't actually know what does because it was in the Season 2 at the end. What does it do? I know it takes somebody in and kills them. That much I know. It possesses a bunch of people and if they go in, the first one that goes in dies. It's not that bad. Uh, it's really not that bad. I would say that you're pretty much annoying. Pretty much annoying. I'd also say maybe even down here. Uh, and it only goes down if somebody panics in its room or you get a good. Yeah, take the day off. There aren't any problems. No problems here. It's annoying. Uh, I think the gear was pretty cool, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's the fan and the suit. I liked it. I thought it was pretty neat. It's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Can't say much more than that. Uh, the bear. What was the bear's name? There's going to be a lot of me checking names, because I don't actually remember most of the people from Season 2. Because I did not spend much time with them. Happy Teddy Bear. I know what he does. Know what he does you have to work with other employees look I, this one always fucked me up because i never got it right and i still don't actually remember exactly how to do it. let's see the ability is triggered upon sending the same worker twice in a row so you have to send i still don't know. i look I, i'll be honest with you i still don't remember very much I, I'm pretty sure you send somebody in to work with it. Send that person somewhere else while you send another person in to work with him, and then just alternate the two and you're fine. I'll be honest though, I really don't know. And me not knowing cost a lot of employees' lives. <laughs> um, it's annoying. I didn't like him that much. Uh, anytime he got a meltdown, I had to make sure I sent a whole new employee in. Yeah, pretty annoying, pretty annoying. I know what your name is. I'm pretty sure you're Clouded Monk. And this is one of the backer ones, too, I think. It is. It sure is. So was the backwards clock, and so was Army in Black. 
Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, you, I didn't have any problem with you whatsoever. I did not have a single problem with you whatsoever. Um, this is probably a little bit biased because, like I said, it's hard to it's hard to rate them from an objective opinion, especially since I didn't really see what he did because I didn't spend much time with him at all. I know that he escapes and turns into like a big demon thing, and then he runs at you and eats you, and it's like an instant kill. Um, it's annoying, sure. I didn't personally have any issue with it. I'll put him in annoying. I'll put him in annoying. I didn't have any issue with him. Um, but then again, like I said, we were at the rush to the finish line. Yeah, I would have been surprised if we did have an issue with him. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. All right, Letitia. Hot take, uh, not that bad. Gives you the gift, and if you get the gift, you have to work with her. But I kind of did that anyways. Pretty much just one employee would work with the same abnormality all day, and then the next day they would move. So it wasn't really the end of the world, unless you had somebody for some weird, you know, in some weird scenario, come all the way over to work with her for no reason, and then go back and they happen to get it. Which didn't really happen, I don't think ever. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, you don't, you literally could ignore it and not have any issue. Okay, Alonto de la Luna. I liked you. You were pretty cool. You were pretty cool. And also not that bad. Uh, I liked the recital. I thought that was fun. I mostly did it just to dick around. Like, we would have something happening. I'd be like, oh, God, we need some background music. Somebody go play. <laughs> uh, that was, I mean, that was fun. I thought it was fun. Not hard. It wasn't hard at all. Pretty straightforward. You, on the other hand, were pretty annoying. All around helper. Also, they're not alphabetized anymore, I just noticed. Because all around helper should not be there. <laughs> um, all around helper was annoying. It would escape, turn into a big spinning wheel of death, and then, like, hurt anybody in its path. Once you got to a certain level, you pretty much weren't able to instantly die from it anymore, and it doesn't take much to suppress. Just annoying. Red. Little Red Riding Hood. Here's the thing. I would like to put you in the very helpful. I don't think I can. I think the downside to having you in the facility is worse than the benefits that we receive. I think you're really hard. I think you're really hard. She gets out. And after like a certain amount of abnormality breaches, I'm pretty sure, and we'll go and track them down. But she also just goes around and murders other people in her way. And also, if she's shooting at something, her bullets do damage to everybody in, like, the line of fire. So, that's kind of cool. It was pretty hard. It was pretty hard. Anytime she got out, that was kind of, a, like, an issue. Uh, and we'd have to send a squad on her immediately. Otherwise, we've risked losing the day. I would say she was really hard. Especially paired with the wolf. She gets even faster, and her her attacks do even more damage, I'm pretty sure. Ugh, it's pretty annoying. Luminous Bracelet. I feel like you're the one that didn't do literally anything. Is this correct? Hang on a moment. Hang on a moment. It is the one that doesn't do anything. Nice. Nice. It doesn't do anything. I thought that this was the one. Well, it just kills your employees. <laughs> um, it's supposed to heal them. And if you heal too much, then you... Um, hang on. And if, yeah, if you heal too much, then it kills you. And if you return it without having... Look, it doesn't do anything. And it kills people. So, I don't really know where to put it. I guess you'd never have to use it, and you never should use it either. It literally, I cannot stress this enough, does not work. <laughs> it doesn't do a single thing. It just kills people. Don't ever touch it. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's annoying. Meat Lantern was also in the Season 2, and actually did cause a bit of an issue for us. I say you're difficult but manageable. It does a lot of damage when it pops out. I think it instant wiped a couple of our employees when it did. Pretty obnoxious. Pretty obnoxious. Um, we got it eventually. Every time we would maybe suffer like one or two casualties. 
not the end of the world. It was just, it was just obnoxious. Um, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable putting you there. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna pause this recording real quick and change the music out because at the halfway point, I wanted to do that and we're just now there. So I will be back in just one second. All right, we are back. I'm not gonna lie to you. I did just talk for a couple minutes while I was setting this up. Um, <laughs> then I realized I was signed into my personal YouTube account and it also showed my name. So we're not gonna have that showing and I'm going to take that part out. Not that I don't trust you guys, all right? Not that I don't trust you guys, but look, look, I gotta, I gotta keep some of my privacy, all right? Um, we are playing the she, uh, the she said soundtrack for the core suppression because it is the best in the game. There is no debate. It's not an, it's not an opinion, it's a fact. That's what we get to listen to while we finish this off. Um, Melting Love. Yeah, it's definitely one of these two. I think it's really hard, but not unstoppable. The problem comes with the plague. If you contract the plague from her and then start to spread it around, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, now, the fix to this is just to do repression work 100 times and not die, which is also pretty easy in the later stages. Overall, I would say it's pretty manageable. Um, it's hard, don't get me wrong. As soon as one person gets it and you do not realize, your whole facility is going to die. The solution that I had for this was I just killed all the clerks at the start of the day in the facility it was in and then told that person to stay in the corridor and then didn't work the rest of that facility for the rest of the day. Uh, and that solved all my issues, so it was, it, look, it's it's really hard. It's not the end of the world, though. I think this is mirror something, 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 mirror to another, no, mirror of adjustment. Portrait of another world, mirror of adjustment, right. You just change stats around, which is okay because if, it means that you can get a guaranteed, like, max on your stats early on. I just completely unplugged my whole headphone thing, by the way. Uh, it means that you can get, like, an early max stat if you use it enough times. Uh, if you grind something out that's super easy, like Fortitude or Temperance, that you can get Justice maxed in, like, you know, as soon as you get it, basically, because it'll shuffle them around then you can pretty much just ensure that somebody will be an unstoppable killing machine. I think it's pretty good. I'm I'm a fan. I didn't have to do that, just, but that's just because I had at that point completed the HOD suppression and had trainers for all of my stats, so it wasn't as necessary. So we're not going to put it in the very helpful because I actually don't think it's that good. Um, Personally, at least, that's just my opinion. That is what it can be used for, but I didn't use it for that. To me, in my eyes, it's just another abnormality that exists. Ugh, nameless fetus. Another one that words can't really describe the levels of annoyance. You're pretty bad. You're pretty bad. Um, it will start to wail and let abnormalities in the surrounding uh, containments out. We had the luxury of having him right next to nothing there, I'm pretty sure. No, it wasn't nothing there. Actually, no, it was nothing there. It was nothing there in Melting Love, I'm pretty sure, the two of them. It was pretty bad. It was pretty annoying. Um, basically, if you get a bad placement with him, you're pretty much done. Because, I mean, unless you can nail it every time perfectly, you will... I mean, you will let something out. It's just how it is. I hated it. I hated it. I thought it was awful. I thought it was super obnoxious. Um, another one that I would literally be fine to never see ever again. So that's just my, that's my two cents. Notes from a crazed researcher is one that I don't actually remember what does. Boosts temperance. And you have to work with them. I think. Um, yes. You have to work with them, otherwise they die. And if they take too much damage, they die. Got it. Goodbye. Uh, you were horrible. I did not like you that much. I never used you, really. You don't have to, either. It's just there. It, it pretty much is just in the room. As well as you. <laughs> I mean, it, it is what it is. I didn't think it was that great. I don't see a benefit to having temperance increased. I guess maybe for some of them, like 
maybe you could say there's an argument to be made for like white knight maybe but i didn't really have an issue with it that much with our base rates and even then if you take too much damage while holding it you die so even if you go in with white knight you're almost assuredly going to die because you take so much pale damage yeah it's it's gonna stay here i didn't like that much i still don't like it that much it's just kind of annoying my man my man nothing there This is another one that might possibly be a hot take. I truly think that he is difficult but manageable. Now here's my reasoning behind this. I think he only escaped one time, and it was when we let him out. Other than that, it's not hard to keep him contained. It's really not. His suppression is near impossible. Thank god I didn't actually have to try and do that. Nor was I going to. There's no need for me to. I, I don't have to suppress this thing. I can let him do his own thing and just keep everybody away from him. And then that's all I have to do. It's, I mean, he is pretty bad. He's pretty bad. But I don't think he's that bad. He's difficult but manageable. He does a lot of damage to you while you're working. If you have the nothing there set, though, it's not that bad. He, he does damage, but he won't kill you. Yeah, it's difficult but manageable. I know, I know, a lot of you would probably say that he's in the unstoppable category. I could agree. In his in his escaped form, yes. But on his own, before he escapes, leading up to that point, you have to do a lot of bad things to get him out. <laughs> you have to make a lot of stupid decisions to let him out. And I truly just don't think it's that bad. Yeah, old faith and promise is kind of uh, negligible. You you get a buff from one of your weapons, but the weapon has a chance of being lost. So you never want to use it on an Aleph tier weapon unless you have like 999 points with the thing like White Knight. But even then, White Knight, you have to suppress to get the weapon. So yeah, it's just pretty obnoxious. Um, I, I never used it on its own for its intended purpose. I would only use it if there was a, uh, if there was a meltdown on it. And even then I would send somebody in with like shit gear, like with like Beauty and the Beast gear that we could just get back in four seconds and then never have to think about it ever again. Yeah, that's kind of my opinion on it. Never, never use it, never going to use it. You're also in this category. Uh, I don't remember what your name is. So, uh, where are you? Give me a moment while I try and find this thing. The old lady, but what's her name? Oh, it's literally, <laughs> it's literally just old lady. That's, yeah. Ah. Yeah, I knew that. Um, if you don't work with her, she starts to get these like black spindly things in her uh, in her containment unit. And if you go in, then they get stuck to you. But you just don't have to work with her at all. You literally just don't have to go in. At that point, there's no reason to. Yeah, I would say it's pretty much just existent there. If you work with her, cool. If not, it's whatever. You don't have to. She won't escape. So... Yeah, pretty, pretty okay. Ah, oh, one sin. Very helpful, thank you. The only surefire means of suppressing White Knight. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, he bailed us out more times than I would like to admit. Uh, and we didn't just continue the day afterwards, obviously. Um, he bailed us out and then we just reset, but... Um, he's very helpful. He also provides a full sanity restore to everybody i believe if you get a perfect with him which is not hard to do i mean overall he's just great overall he's just amazing uh very very big fan of him yeah opened can of well cheers i think that you have a chance to instant kill yeah yeah uh-huh you can heal 40% of max HP, 40% of SP. And if you get grape, it heals both at 30%. If they get a bad, they fall asleep and then die. Okay. Not a huge fan. Um, it's not that bad, though. It's another one that you really don't have to like mess with at all. I guess the healing is okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's alright. It's not the end of the world. I can definitely live with 
it being there. You don't have to pay attention to it at all. On the other hand, Parasite Tree, I would say that she's pretty unstoppable. Um, there's no means of counteracting its its thing, its call, and then like infection. Uh, and it can become especially bad in the end game, believe it or not. Uh, at the end of at the end of um, what's it called? Lobotomy season two. Uh, you actually were part of the downfall of our final day, which crazy, I know. How could you possibly lose the final day? All that the facility does is turn around. Turn upside down. I know, I know. Yes, I know. Um, but you also can't drag and select employees on the final day, apparently, after a certain amount of time passes. So we couldn't actually send anybody to work with them um, because everybody had worked with them, and you can't scroll wheel either. So he just kept summoning people. And we just kept losing people, and I had to just go through and purge employees. And then I ran out of bullets, and he kept doing it. Pretty obnoxious. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's unstoppable. Anything, anytime that you get five of them, they just die instantly. There's nothing you can do. It's pretty annoying. It's pretty annoying. Um, the only means of fixing it is to execute bullet one of your employees, but I, at that point, you still lose an employee, you know? It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I did not like him one bit. Uh, it's pretty, pretty annoying. Plague Doctor. Pretty helpful. Now, here's the thing with Plague Doctor. It temporarily, I'm, I'm literally gonna move him in two seconds. Uh, I just wanted to put him here for a second just to get like a, ooh, uh. Uh, no, he's not very helpful. He's actually pretty annoying. And that's where he's going. He's going into just annoying. I think the Plague Doctor is an interesting one. Because while he does have a benefit associated with him, overall, he's very annoying. He's very annoying. Um, mostly just because of the fact that he moves people around. White Knight as well. The two of them moving people around is annoying. It's very annoying. I very much think that it's an okay one to have. Because I think that the blessing is actually pretty good. Uh, it gives you more health, it gives you more... Let me, let me give you exactly what it gives you. I can just check real quick. Let's see. Yeah. Plus 6 HP, plus 6 a, uh, SP, plus 6 success rate, plus 6 work speed, plus 6 movement speed, plus 6 attack speed. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's an all... I mean, it's essentially like an all stats up, right? And it... Uh, granted, it does pick you out to be one of the blessed... But that's okay, because all you have to do is memory repo after he turns into White Knight, and then all those employees come back to life. Oh, and also, you get to keep White Knight, and if he escapes, then yet it's, it's not the end of the world, basically. He's just annoying because he moves people around. That's all that can be said about him. He'll call people in to get blessed. Again, you just literally memory repo, and you're fine. Yeah, that's my opinion on the whole matter. Orcubus. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. Does he go in to take the day off? Yeah, I think so. It's annoying because uh, if your attachment gets lowered by his trinket, his trinket, his uh, ego gift at starting level, you will die. But again, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's just annoying. Just, yeah, it's just annoying. It's just annoying. Portrait of Another World is actually pretty cool. I actually liked it a lot. It completely takes any damage that would be taken from you and puts it onto another employee. I think they take double damage, too. I'm, I'm double-checking on that one. I think it takes damage, it moves it, mitigates it from your employee, and that employee takes double. Let's see here. Let's see here. Yeah, 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 yeah. At a 1.5 increase. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that, uh, I mean, it's it's good because you can pretty much just keep one of your employees from dying. Like, if they're going to do some huge suppression, like, say, White Knight or Apocalypse Bird, they won't die from straight damage. Somebody else will. They won't, but somebody else will. I think that's okay. Uh, and it continues to transfer as well. As long as you get somebody good, uh, your employee cannot die. And also, I think that it pairs well with... The censored weapon, I think. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think that if you have the censored weapon and you take damage, 
then they only take the amount of damage that you took and healed. I'm not, I'm not positive on that. I'm not positive. I think, I feel like that's what was happening when I was doing it. That could be, I mean, look, I could be lying to you right now. I have no idea. That's how it seemed to me. Hode is another one of the backer abnormalities. Um, let me make sure that we haven't actually talked about any of the other ones that I forgot. Parasite Tree was as well. Whoever put that in, uh, you're horrible die. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a little bit rude. What I should have said was, you're horrible, please die. Melting Glove was as well. This is the last, uh, this is the last backer one. Pote is really easy. S super simple. There's not much, there's, I mean, there's not much that goes into it. The biggest concern is just if it gets out, but even then the suppression's so easy. Um, yeah. That's about all that'd be said about that. Skin Prophecy, another one. I, look, I don't know what Skin Prophecy does. I'm not gonna pretend like I do. I'm not gonna look it up either because I don't really care. I didn't use it. <laughs> if I didn't use it, if I didn't see any noticeable benefit from using it, I'm not gonna put it in the list as anything that's benefiting me. Um, it just, it didn't immediately jump out as something great. I don't remember it. Like I remember behavior adjustment or the backward clock or the portrait. Can't be that good. So you can say in the, mm, yep, they exist category. Same with Punishing Bird. Except Punishing Bird's a little bit more annoying. Uh, I could put him in Unstoppable. He warranted a whole rap suppression on his own. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, look, he's annoying. Uh, it gets out all the time. Does a little bit of poke damage here and there. Aside from that, it's not really the end of the world. Uh, if you attack him, then he can instant kill one of your employees if he hits him. But we actually found out that you can keep your employee alive uh, with, the, with the right setup, because we did. Uh, we did, in fact, have that happen. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty neat. It was pretty neat. Um, you're just annoying. Just annoying. Pretty sure this is Queen B. Let me double check. Queen B. Queen B. Yeah. Pretty annoying. Uh, I'd say it's more difficult than manageable. Uh, difficult, but manageable, though. It uh, releases spores that if it infects the clerks and employees will do damage over time and then ultimately kill them. Which is pretty obnoxious, but... Yeah, I mean, it's not that bad. Not that bad at all. It's just one of those things where if it happens, you just have to make sure that you know what to do. Which is pretty much just kill all the hornets before they can continue to kill people, because it'll just keep spawning them. Uh, red shoes you don't even have to worry about. They summon people, the people get summoned, you know. They go crazy. Ooh, uh, they kill people. Not that bad. It's not that bad at all. Rodolta the Slay is another one that's more of a benefit than anything, just because they're a pretty good trainer. Don't have to worry anything about that one. Um, if it escapes, it does white damage across the, you know, the room that it's in. Not that bad. Uh, it's pretty simple. Scarecrow is a joke. Scarecrow gets out. Um, you pretty much just send any high-level employee on him. They can tank him on their own. It's annoying because he can heal from the clerks as they come up to him, but it's, I mean, he's not bad at all. You caused me a lot of issue. You caused me a lot of issue. Mostly because I'd never thought to not look at it while people were working on it. Uh, and so it resulted in us having to suppress it a lot. And I mean a lot, a lot. But once I figured out the gimmick, it was okay. I'd say if you're looking at it in terms of a new starting player like myself, I would never have thought to look away. Ever. <laughs> Not a single time. And and I was told that actually if you had read the little blurbs that popped up, then you would have known maybe to look away. But I was not paying attention to those. I don't think a lot of people probably would be either. You're pretty hard. You're pretty hard. You do pose a threat, at least at early level. Uh, Scorch Girl is another one that's just annoying. She'll get out, she'll do an explosion in a room. It doesn't kill people, I don't think, at least not often. Yeah. Yeah, you're just annoying. The shelter is pretty cool. Uh, that's what we used to take out the red mist. Uh, and it worked, so <laughs> can't complain too much about that. You go in, It'll release all the abnormalities after a certain amount of time, but it protects your employee entirely from damage. Which is cool. I like that. Uh, actually, it doesn't protect them from everything, however, because you can still have that employee die if you press the button. 
which I also did find out. <laughs> so, yeah. Pretty pretty neat, pretty fun. Uh, sh uh Shylock, Shylock today, maybe, possibly? I I'm gonna look this one up. Sh yeah, today's Shylock. You're kind of annoying at, at an early level, but not hard either. Uh, you just have to make sure that you don't do it on the bad face, the mad face, and you're fine. Pretty straightforward. The ego stuff is okay. Not my favorite, not my least favorite. Uh, Singing Machine's one of my least favorites, though. It's difficult but manageable, depending on the level that you're at. If you get to a certain level, you can't work with it at all. Um, because it's one of the few that actually has a minimum as the maximum. So you can't be above a certain level, otherwise it will kill your employees. And I think that that might be the only one like that. At the top of my head, I think that's the only one like that. It's pretty annoying. It'll Im it'll immediately suck them in and kill them. So, yeah, pretty obnoxious, to say the least. Um, you can go in the difficult and manageable, because it just depends. If you send somebody in, you kind of are dooming yourself, but... Hey, who am I to judge? <laughs> Snow White's apple is pretty hard. It's pretty hard. It gets out. It does uh, vines in a corridor's hallway. It slows you down. It does damage as you uh, go up to it. It does mass attack damage. Mass attack as if I'm... Look, I've been playing too much Library of Arena. <laughs> it does uh, room-wide damage as you go up to it. It's just annoying. I mean, it's really annoying. And it does a lot of damage, too. Ugh, excuse me. I've been talking a lot, so I'm yawning now. I think the biggest issue with this comes from the fact that it has it, it has a habit of uh, going and like going to the complete opposite end of your facility, and then you have to try and make your way through the vines to get to it. It's almost better to just leave her to do her own thing, and then if she happens next to you, go kill her. She's going to kill all of your clerks pretty much no matter what. There's not really a fix for that. Yeah, pretty pretty hard. Pretty hard. Uh, spider Bud is not that bad. If you have instincts less than two, I think you die going in. I'm gonna double check. I think it's less than two. Spider Bud, where are you? I guess we're looking it up. Spider, there it is. Spider Bud. Less than, no, it's Prudence less than one. Yes, prudence less than one, it'll kill you. Eh, it's alright. Not that bad. Burrowing Heaven is another one that's just annoying. If you look away from it while you're working, it'll count down its cliff off and kill the employee and also escape and kill everybody else. I feel like the actual look box when it escapes is different from when it's being worked with because I feel like I was still watching it and it would move and kill people anyways. Uh, look, I have no idea. I'll be honest with you. It's it's kind of up in the air for me personally Pretty annoying pretty annoying to say the least child of the galaxy is very helpful. Thank you <laughs> Very helpful. Thank you Gives you the stone and it's a huge I mean absolutely massive Trainer for stats uh, That was you were what we used to get most of our training up in the beginning anyways that was kind of huge. I was kind of huge. So, you were very helpful. Very helpful. The stone is annoying because you can't work with other people, but even then, it's not the end of the world. Not at all. Dreaming current is not that bad. They're just annoying. It's just annoying. Um, I don't actually remember everything about dreaming current either. I'm checking right now. Yep, dreaming current. Give me the, give me the scoop. If it reaches zero, then it escapes. Makes people slower when they pass by them. It's just, just annoying. It's just annoying. Not hard to suppress, not hard to let out either. Just annoying. Heart of Aspiration sucks. Not a huge fan. Not a huge fan. Uh, it'll kill you, I'm pretty sure, after you don't take damage for a certain amount of time. I'm verifying that. Heart of Aspiration. 
Let's see. If they don't attack before they return it. Before 30 seconds, they panic when they return. Gotcha. Annoying. Annoying. Just annoying. Not the end of the world. Same with you. You're just annoying. Uh, King agreed. If it gets out, it does a lot of damage. It passes by. Again, you just follow behind it and you don't have to worry. It'll kill all of your clerks, but the clerks are meant to be disposable anyways. I mean, Jesus, that's what we do for Queen of Hatred, so... Very, very helpful. Thank you. I would actually like to put you up near the top with behavior adjustment. Uh, because you, along with a censored weapon and probably the Blue Star Gift. Or not the Blue Star Gift, the Blue Star Suit. You, you, I mean, you can't die. You can't die. I gave Henry the, uh... Oh, I gotta stretch real quick. I gave Henry the censored weapon, and he also had, I think at one point he had the, uh, White Knight gear. Just the suit. That man was unstoppable. Along with the blessing, god, he could not be killed. You pretty much don't take damage at that point. He... I actually remember he had the blessing as well as the censored weapon and some suit of some kind, and he got caught by the rabbits, but he wasn't able to die uh, because he just couldn't die. So he was just running through the room, and I actually had to execute bullet him to get the day to end because it was at the same time as uh, White Knight had broken loose. So we couldn't pause, uh, and the person was stuck in the room with him. Look, it was a long story. I don't remember what episode it is, but you're gonna have to go watch if you want if you want to see it in action. I guess that's just an excuse to promote my lobotomy channel, or not my lobotomy channel, my lobotomy series here on the channel. Uh, yeah, we had to execute him. He was unstoppable. I mean, the the blessing is crazy good. It it doubles the damage that you take from pale. But at the same time, if you only take 0.2 from pale, and then you make that 0.4. And on top of that point four, you have the censored weapon, so you take only pretty much half damage. And look, you're pretty much at the same place you started at, so it's just point two, along with everything else being a point one. Look, it's just, it's really good. It's really good. You pretty much can get someone to not die at that point. You're pretty bad. You're pretty bad. You're pretty annoying. Um, he would summon people into the room and then turn them into like mushroom people. It's just annoying more than anything. Not the end of the world. Not much more to be said about that, I don't think. Not Smiling Bodies is also pretty difficult. Uh, just for the sole fact that they would escape upon a number of deaths, you pretty much just had to have a team waiting for him right before he got out. And then when he did get out, you just beat him, and it was not hard to beat him down. And then he would go back in. If he got to stage three, that's when the real issues would start. But even then, it wasn't the end of the world, because we still could take him down at that point. He was just pretty, pretty hard. He was just pretty hard. He was just difficult but manageable. I don't know what you are. Naked Nest, I know, is the name, but I don't know what you do. Because you were also at the end of Season 2. Let me read real quick, hang on. <laughs> oh my god, excuse me. Out of control. Yada, 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 yada. Pretty much nothing. You're just there. You're pretty much just there. I know. I know. Queen of Hatred going above nothing there. An Apocalypse Bird? Yeah. Yeah. I cannot tell you how many times we had to restart because she got out. I literally could not tell you. I have lost count. Queen of Hatred... It's probably my single least favorite abnormality in the entire game. Uh, she teleports. She does a huge blast across pretty much the entire facility. That instantly evaporates anything that comes into contact with. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I hate her a lot. Um, she doesn't take that much damage. And she does go into a period of like stun after she does her blast, the Arcana Blast. Even then, it's not enough time to kill her, and she just teleports across the other side. It's like all ruined but worse. Pretty much, if I had to if I had to sum it up in like a sentence, all ruined but worse. All ruined but massive damage and worse. Teresia, I don't actually like remember what you do either, so kind of are also going into the category of just there. 
Silent Orchestra was pretty difficult, but also pretty manageable, because uh, you just didn't work with it and you didn't have any issue. Not to mention the fact that he could give you complete immunity to white damage, and I actually healed from it. That's pretty good, because that makes fights like Blue Star trivialized by two employees. Not to mention that his suppression is really easy. Uh, I know that he's immune during those stages, but if you just send everybody on him and then wait a couple of seconds, as he starts to change through stages on his own, he just dies. Uh, it's it's not bad at all, I wouldn't say. Pretty easy. Same with you, you were actually pretty easy. I'd say you're pretty annoying, but that's about it. Freeze people, then you'd go rescue them, and I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. I didn't have any issues really with people getting frozen anyways, just because we got to a point where nobody that was working with her was below like level four. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't too bad. You are pretty bad. You're pretty bad. And now here's the reasoning behind why Void Dream is going up in the pretty hard category. Because, unfortunately, Lobotomy Corporation has this fun thing where the possession mechanics don't work. Um, but not the possession, but the uncontrollable mechanics don't work. If Void Dream puts your people to sleep, you have, I would say you have like a 25% chance of not being able to wake them up, and then they just stay dead. And you end the day and they are dead. Uh, I had to restart like two times, I think, because he would shoot out his things and knock people out. And they would just not be able to be woken up. You would not be able to do it. It's pretty bad. Pretty annoying. Um, really hard, because it's, if you get out, if like if, if Void Dream gets out, it's pretty much, that's it. If, if you get a bug, you know, the bug, and you have your people not be able to woken up, that's it. That's all you can do. It's just annoying. Uh, the jump scare got me, I'm not gonna lie. Got me, I think, twice. Because I would forget about it, and then I would just have this scream emanate from my headphones, and I'd be like, what is happening? Uh, not, not horrible. Just annoying. Just annoying. You are also pretty annoying, but that's about it. You would eat people at certain levels, I think. Warm-hearted woodsman, do-do-do-do-do. Warm-hearted woodsman, where are you? Only a sub. Ugh, I guess we're gonna look it up. There he is. Yeah, what's the level that he eats people at? Temperance 3 or higher. Yeah, so he's the other one that actually has that, uh, that thing where he will do his... his massive murder spree if you're at a level that does not deem worthy of him um and by that i mean too high of a level because there's only the only other one that i i'm pretty sure was singing machine so these two were annoying um but singing, singing machine was worse i would say there was no benefit to this whatsoever it, it literally didn't have a, a plus side it would just murder people it would i mean that was it it would just murder people <laughs> it was fun uh, I, I put some people in there to see how long they would last. It wasn't very long. They would still die. White Knight. Unstoppable, obviously. Obviously. Um, I mean, look. The suppression of White Knight took me like four hours on my own. Not to mention all the time I spent during the episodes trying to do it. And all the wacky means of doing so that we're about to talk about. Look, it, it's it's probably the hardest thing I did in that game. Even the Bina Hakma suppression was easier than that. It was just annoying. This was just annoying. Or that was just annoying. This wasn't this was like impossible. It was really bad. Now we get to Yin and Yang, which I actually don't remember what Yang did. If anything. Yang made it so that they received constant healing of SP and their white defense became 0.1. But if Yang is in, or if Yang, yeah, if, if Yin is in the facility, then its counter would drop after 30 seconds. Uh, it's okay. I would never use it. And you were alright as well. Just annoying. The two of them met up though, however. I wish that the dragon was here, but if they met up and the dragon came, the dragon's pretty unstoppable because it'll re like it'll it'll flip whatever it is to the other side which sounds weird i know if a cl if a cliff off meltdown is at like five and that max is five it'd go to zero but if it's at a one then it would go back to like four so it could be good it could be bad if your health was at 100 it went to zero if it was at one it went to 99 
I tried to use it to kill White Knight. I lined it up perfectly, and it did nothing. So just keep in mind, the dragon attack doesn't work. Uh, you must be happy is another one that I would never use, really, in any circumstance whatsoever, because it's just... Hey, look, you get a stat boost, but at the end of the day, if your stats exceed a certain amount, you just died. Uh, your character just disappeared. It was not great. <laughs> it was not great at all. Ah... The unstoppable. The hardest hardest abnormality in this entire game is your bald. And that's because watching my entire department go bald, I would not want to play the game ever again. It's the only abnormality that would shirk me away from ever wanting to touch the game ever again. I couldn't bear to see my poor employees with no hair. The the sight. The the sight, the horror. It's uh, it's probably at the top of the list. Probably at the top of the list. Brian's luscious mane, Henry's blue hair, just gone. Ugh. Imagine. Imagine. The horror. That about does it. Uh, this is my list. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, peep the, the follow at the bottom there. I didn't actually realize that, that was there, but I did have to make an account with my Twitter, so... There it is, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... That's it. Um, unstoppable, really hard, difficult... Just annoying. Take the day off. Very helpful. Pretty evenly distributed, about as, as about as much as I thought it would be. Um, there's actually more in the take the day off than I thought there were going to be as well, but I'd say this is this is a pretty good representation of, of my opinions as a whole regarding most of the abnormalities. So yeah, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, this tierless video. I had a lot of fun. Um, I'm definitely interested to hear some of your all's opinions on what I did and did not rank, like where. Um, so yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a thumbs down. If you'd like to see more, consider subscribing. I upload daily at two o'clock and three o'clock. As always, I hope that you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you all in the next episode. So long everybody. <laughs> and I'm going to get some water because I've been talking for an hour and 30 minutes with no water break. So <laughs> I will see you all next time. <laughs>